Hey Monojack, how you doing? Hey, hey Nick, nice to see you. Uh, yeah, it's been a little while. First super booth? Yeah, I can't believe I'm here. Um, yeah, a lot of uh, sleepless nights and uh, big pushes to get this here today. But I'm over the moon to be able to show people what is the product of like three years of obsessing about tape. Uh, yeah, well we, we saw you at Elevator, didn't we? And, yeah, uh, yeah. You're, you're, and at the time I was still doing repairs, but now I'm completely, I've got to completely focus on like kind of manifesting and getting these ideas out of my head. So I'm taking a lot of the influences from my time repairing, working with vintage machines like Space Echoes and trying to find new ways and new approaches to using tape uh, with Eurorack. So, so this is really, I mean, you know, this, this looks fascinating. Thanks, so tell us, tell us what's going on yeah. here. So um, it all starts with uh, Pierre Schoffer and Music Concret. Uh, my approach to, um, you know, experimenting with sound is Rather than judging it, I'm just trying to experience it in the moment. And I find tapes great for this. So yeah. I go online, I buy lots of old tapes, and then I make tape loops. And so I then work with this kind of style of having kind of snippets of sounds and atmospheres and samples. And then we can bring this into the Eurorack system. And then you have everything here. If you have other modules ready to manipulate and express, yeah. Nice. Um, so, and this has manifested itself in. Uh, I'll work backwards. This is my most recent product. It's only uh, nine days old now. Uh, I worked through the night after seeing uh, Jerome Noltinger play in Bristol and realizing I need to hear my machine. He, so I didn't sleep uh, after seeing him, and I managed to hear it very early in the morning. It was awful, overblown, distorted, but it recorded and played back. And then I had just enough time before I flew to get it to this point. So what we're gonna do first of all, is just, we have a, the idea is it's a fully customizable uh, tape machine. So I'm calling it Tape Rack. And what you'll be able to do is design your own custom tape machine using different parts and then arrange them in your own order for your own taste. So you could either use it as a delay, a sound on sound, or just simply as a recording device to like capture a moment in time. So what we're gonna do is get it going. And uh, at the moment, our tape is completely blank. I've got erase here selected. So I'm gonna take this off. We have, just for ease of demoing, uh, a U-Braid clone that I do, and then, now this will just keep going down round. Then you've got speed control. Yeah, and uh, what Jerome was doing live was he was recording the sound of the machine back into itself, and this created some really incredible effects. It was like AMSR heaven. He even had the uh, air conditioner turned off so we could hear all the clicks and the pops of the mechanical mechanisms, and then recording that to the tape whilst warping the speed. So uh, I've already let him know I'm gonna incorporate that. We're gonna have an inductor on the motor later on and use my piezos to pick up more stuff. But now we've got this going around. Let's add some more bits. Oh, so you're just doing like a sound on sound, yeah. a, a red, red recording, right? Yeah. So this way, we're just adding and adding, but we can erase, get rid of it. And the idea is, uh, with your system, I don't have it patched up now because uh, it's uh, quite difficult uh, whilst talking, but you can imagine, we can take a mix of these free heads, as well as listening to them, we can start to feed that audio back into the record head, but through our modular system. So, ah. uh, the, and the, the reason I think this is the ideal format is, um, whilst working on WEM copycats and Space Echoes, even those machines, these beautiful kind of seminal machines, only use passive low pass filters in the feedback network. Uh, so this is quite lim limited when you consider you've got things like band passes, you could even pass it through a phaser or a uh, distortion or anything before you go back in the feedback and then it really starts to sing. It's, are you running it in mono or is it a stereo? Uh, I mean, I'm very mono jack. I mean, I suppose. Yeah. I know. Um, I'm faking it. Fake it till you make it. It's going through uh, uh, DSP at the end, just so delay into delay. I love sometimes doing short delays like this on our 
We're using this more as a tape machine at the moment, but... Oh, excuse me. Uh, it is eight days old, so bear yeah, with me. No, but yeah, no, yeah. But uh, the issue is at the moment, we're outside. It's very hot and humid. Yeah. Um, but in the future, the idea is we'll use Teflon for all of these. And I guess uh, if you have sprung guides, it'll be yeah. able to take up the Yeah, the so I'm looking at like Wem copycats and Space Echoes and different machines, and we're gonna start incorporating. I mean, these people have put their love, effort, and time and energy into perfecting it. The, the technology was lost in the late 80s, a bit like similar to analog synths. The technology of synths was forgotten when people went to digital and things like DX7. Tape was forgotten when we went to CDs. All of it's still there. Uh, Toshiba and Sonyu stuff, data sheets have taught me what a lot. Are you, what are you using then? Are you using, uh, is there a specific tape formula you're using to get the best? Ah, so uh, if you use metal tape and uh, chrome tape, th at the moment we've just got ferric tape, but that's easier to work with, uh, like to make your loops. You right. can get much better recording and playback, like your noise floor is the same, but your playback volume with uh, chrome and metal tape. Yeah, well, it, we always used to use those in, uh, in uh, four tracks. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you're like this then. Uh, so I was telling you about my approach with Music Concrete and my tape loops. I've created a module called Four Track to Eurorack. The idea being you make a collage of four loops on here using a four track and then you can come straight from line level up to modular level ready to process in your system. Oh, nice. So the idea of the system you might have noticed I was able to build up a sequence by just hard recording in. So I'm liking the idea of having this looser approach. No sequences and then I just hard chain everything to this. I mean uh, I know I shouldn't be the, uh, but if you love kicks and sidechain distortion, Bastille do the best uh, module yeah. out there. Um, so, as well as that, I love messing around with physical uh, feedback and like electromechanical stuff. Big ups to Hack Electronics who are working with all this mechanical stuff at the moment. But what we got now is a solenoid tapping our. And we can get this really going. And I have a feedback environment going on where we're listening to the piezo and then we can send it to the transducer. Uh, there's a speaker module and all it has, all that has to happen is basically we send out. And now it might scream, this might be nice and this is the fun of it. We're experiencing this all at the same moment. I don't know what's going to happen. Feedback is a weird, it's the ether singing. So here we go. Nice. And then we... So this way, uh, newfound sound by listening to the material. If you pass, you can make your own plate reverb. Uh, this transducer, big metal sheets. Yeah, I've seen that. And, uh, so, so how do you get the uh, timing of the loop? Because, so for instance, if you're putting rhythmical aspects into it, yep. how do you know it's going to be so X if, bars long? Uh, you kind of... Uh, the loop will go round, uh, and as long as you say hard record into it in rhythm with the piece, and don't change the tape speed, it Everything will come round, and you kind of listen to your loop. So you might set one, just one one shot, to give you almost like a metronome, uh, yeah, a okay. feel of how the tape is going, and then you can start to add your extra bits. But the idea is to get off the grid. Yeah, that's yeah. That so um, I'm encouraging people not to use sequences and to find the way that, uh, like Moyer patterns, yeah? If we look at this Moyer pattern, we have two patterns, but the way that they interface and interact creates a new beautiful pattern. So out of two things that seem unconnected, we can make a new pattern. So by keeping my system very minimalistic and just creating chaos and then hard side chaining it against a big fat distorted kick. Right, so you don't put the kick into the loop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah I so. feel like it glues everything together. But uh, yeah, bish bash bosh. And uh, it all started with uh, my tape emulation module, the tape sampler. Now this is gonna get wild. I have a expander for it. Testing, testing, one, two, one, two, one, two. And now uh, we can audio rate modulate this with. 
Wow, okay. Sounds like a lot of fun. Uh, that was quite tame. It can go... I'll it, bet, yeah. uh, I made a... I'll turn some of this nonsense off so now. So, uh, But I made a module that's just a microphone. I call it the intercom mic, and it has this kind of very tannoy, nasally mid-range, you know, but it does this incredible thing where it will just go overblown. So uh, I'm enjoying using my vocals. I like to uh, just harmonize my voice with it, but I'm trying to find new ways to experiment. I've made subtractive synth patches. I've experimented with techno, but this takes me somewhere where I've never been. That moment where you are completely absorbed in the moment and uh, then tape can capture that. So at the end, I'm using a uh, these will be available very soon. I was, man I was able to get enough of them so I've spe I can speed mod. And uh, this is a field recording of me right. walking in the woods. Uh, and let's see if we can listen. Okay. And then I need to go from line to euro. So I made this module um, for anyone else who's tried using desktop gear with modular you'll always encounter the issue of levels you might yeah. use a mixer to do this you know to give you a gain stage but I've put this into a really small package uh, I call it line to euro and uh, it's a 10 times amplifier just to take our now this again is a last minute.com module uh, done the week before right the finished version will have this built in as a slider, and probably the speed control as a slider. Right. Uh, but yeah, we could maybe take this straight into here, and for ease rather than, because uh, there's a whole lot of noodles going on here, but if we just go straight in. Ah, it'd help if I, if I turn it up. Now you hear, some people might think that's a problem, that hiss and that noise. But it's quite charming in a way, isn't it? Yeah. Adds, yeah. And if we maybe take it through a filter first, then the noise actually becomes quite performative. Oscillation then, sorry. But so see, we have our noise up here. Right. Yeah, do you know, we're loot. We're losing some frequencies, but uh, you might find some more. It sounds like a lot of fun. So what, where, where and when can people get hold of this stuff? I mean, you so, said you, it's all a lot of it's yeah, yeah. been last minute for the show. Uh, so yeah, um, finishing these machines, uh, these aren't available, but my main uh, product is the tape sampler, which has a couple of expanders. Everything's available through my website, uh, www.electronic beatboopelectronics.com but also if you're in the EU and you're worried about the B word that shall not be named uh, I'm lucky enough to have uh, Elevator Sound as my friends and they help me distribute in Europe oh, so right, we can get it to you easily uh, but email me uh, it's just me myself and I uh, so uh, if you send me an email uh, we can sort it out brilliant thank you very much bless you thank you very much for coming and seeing me Nick and uh, I hope everyone else enjoys and finds new ways of experimenting with music and finds uh, new sounds. Amen. Thank, Thank you. you.